hello welcome back to part two so this will be basically a flip through and information as we go along now i want to start by explaining how to put some of your embellishments onto the pages now i'm calling complete pages and you're sewing your fabric textile art designs and paperwork embellishments that you are going to put onto the fabric pages now there are several ways of putting things on your pages and um, we have all the standard things that you would imagine a glue gun now a word of warning with the glue gun now this is nice for adding paper centers um, for journaling or you might have made up your your scrapbook and thought oh, I haven't put enough pages in for writing that's okay you can t you can fold your paper in half and on the edge of the join or the seam you can use a glue gun to push them in to the spine but as I was about to say words of warning please be careful when you use a hot glue gun um, of the fabrics that you use this on because I have had synthetic fabrics well and natural fabrics as well um, synthetic melt and natural fa fabrics I have had catch <laughs> on fire <laughs> luckily that was a, that was in the experimental day so I did learn the lesson the hard way so please please just be very selective on how you use your your glue gun and not only that they get extremely hot um, if you don't stand them up right while they're on they drip on everything they can burn your fingers and once they've put you've put something into position after using the, the glue on the back it's there for good you can't move it you don't get any safety seconds to move it around it's stuck solid so it isn't my preferred way but some of you might might like using these I mean they do have their purposes these are always very good the double-sided tapes here these are just excellent for covering the back of your embellishment with this and then sticking it into place good and firm and I thoroughly recommend these I use this quite a lot actually the same with the glue dots I acquired these on a one of um, Tess and my teaching sessions in Whitstable Castle <laughs> She's not noticed that I've got them, along with some rather nice scissors um, and some other bits and pieces, like a jar of beads. She just hasn't noticed, so I haven't mentioned it. What a lovely mother-in-law I am, eh? <laughs> but anyway, these little glue dots, I'm not sure if you can see them. Yes, the light's catching them. These are so tiny, but they are so strong. So I recommend these. However, you do need quite a number on the back of your work depending of course on the size double-sided adhesive glue squares these are called I imagine you can get them all over the place and curved safety pins I like the curved safety pins and um, I believe that they're quilting pins I'm not sure but these are good for popping beads on there's more give in these than the regular safety pins so you can pop beads on here small glass beads plastic beads and it doesn't take up much room because the beads settle into the curve whereas on the ordinary safety pins because they're straight here not curved you're very bit limited to the amount of beads you can pop on there now I also staple use a staple gun as well um, I like using this not all the time but occasionally I need to use that so staple guns another option and of course the washi tape now doing a fabric journal a totally fabric one it's nice to make your own fabric washi tape and that is quite simple it's just a strip of fabric round about this width and then all you do is attach your fabric the length along here cut off what you want say down there 
and then it's ready to be stuck into your journal. You have the two sides, one side for your embellishment and the other side to stick down on your page. And then we have assorted sized paper clips and these are just ideal for clipping bits of paper in, ideas, things from magazines, bits of scribbles, sketches, cards, whatever you want to. Um, these are just fabulous. So as I said, there's a selection, you can tie things in. It's just really being imaginative because with the fabric, you are more limited than when you make paper journal. You've got more options. Oh, what I didn't mention was the glue stick. The Prit or the Yoohoo glue sticks are fabulous as well. They, they're wonderful. And I did have one here um, I was using a little while ago, but my, my son brought his dog in. And the last thing I saw was my son's dog racing around the kitchen with the glue stick in his mouth. So obviously my son's taking it out of his mouth and he's put it somewhere. Now, any of you who have a Springer, spring of spaniel will know exactly what i mean they literally do spring so um everything when they do that has to be put up high however i overlook the glue stick so never mind but um we'll crack on now this is the first page and if you remember this is the page that i did with the serviette you can see the fabric page underneath, oh you can't can you, you can see the fabric page underneath here uh, with the serviette, the very pretty one over the top and this is lettering, it actually says sycamore and it's done in twisted chain stitch all the way along there, I've had that some time and it was just waiting to go into um, a scrapbook but I just thought this fabric here complements this lovely this card this is very very fine embroidery and I believe it dates from the First World War now I'm not too sure about that but that is very fine in silk and it's basically a satin stitch with some stem stitch here over here stem stitch there it's just beautiful and it's I've got two of them and they're from the same person one is to mum and the other one is to dad um, Christmas card and it's all very lovely and I, I as I say I've got the other one I won't put that in here but I liked the colors all the colors went together on this so that's page number one page number two right now i'm fighting to keep this in a screen now this was a little exercise on a line and paper bags small lunch, these are small lunch bags it's the same bag in pencil and this one in pen and then my curtains i was just sitting there one night thinking oh look at these shapes the lines on these curtains here so I've done that and they this is already coming useful for some of my textile design and that one I'm just itching to do something with that so do bear in mind in your in your textile art design scrapbook folder whatever you're going to call yours do be mindful of the things you can put put in on paper this this page isn't finished yet, that's a museum piece and that was fossil in a piece of stone. Um, I've just reused some old paper here. This needs to go in. Now I photographed this in Greenwich in London and behind it is the Thames. I deliberately did it in black and white. And this was a little bit of wrought iron or cast iron on the railings so the railings were only maybe less than four foot high and every now and again there was one of these with a coat of arms on it and that I thought that was really lovely so I brought that home and just used that as a template I did too use that as a template and came up with that and it's mostly chain stitch 
Algeria and I on a canvas background, chain stitch and little crosses here. So and that only took a few hours. Then I thought I wonder what that would look like as a repeat pattern. So I did this. Um, and from that, which I haven't got now because it was it's been used, it's taken out and used. From this I just made a strip of them like that to see what it would look like in a band um, lots of them in a band and this is how you get your designs this is what inspires you to do a design um, so you might just be walking along and see something like that and think oh that's nice or if you think that's nice sketch it uh, photograph it with a camera just or even take a rubbing because that was quite textured and you take it home, pop it in your folder and then see, see what you can get with it. Just play around. As I say, that needs to be um, secured when I'm quite finished with that one. This is just a little bit of playing around with neg negative positive shapes. And it's a, just from a, a magazine. I've cut out the positive shape here and placed it there. And just to have a look at the difference in backgrounds and shapes. I'm finished again but it's there for when I need to do some work on stitches and shape. Negative positive shape. This page, now I don't think I can get this any smaller, was an exercise in knitting and sewing together. So this bit was knitting with all the leftover pieces of wool that I had, I just bunched them all together and made a long strip of wool and knitted with them. As you can see, see that is cross stitch knit. And this little piece here was hand knitted as well. That is the wrong side because I actually prefer the wrong side. And this was just an idea for a, um, a folder or the front of a diary or something. I wasn't too sure, I'm still not too sure, but it's there when I need reference for something. And the colours of this just coincidentally match the colours behind on a tissue. This one, this page here, I think you might have seen before, and I'm not sure if it was one of our COVID projects. A very quick uh, study of tree bark for COVID and all that is in running stitch or slow stitch depends on your mood at the time you could do it mindfully or you could just rush through it so tree bark there and I have used that that one and this is one of the pieces that was carried out in part one so it's now on the fabric page they're all on fabric pages and that was machine sewn on. Now the machine sewn on pieces are sewn onto the single pages before they're made into double pages and aligned. So the lining would be the other side. So this would be a single page and then the, the embellishment would be sewn on first and then this would be joined to that page and then joined to the back, the, the um, pages on the back. Oh, I hope that makes sense. But once again, odds and ends here, that's rather beautiful as well. I like that. That's just collage. Here is just odds and ends of th things I found over time. You have seen this before. This was a, one of our projects going back quite a while. I turned mine into a little sketchbook. The, this, these need um, it's not finished here yet. Tree bark, my glasses, and these from, that's from the Isle of Wight, and this is 18th century costume jewellery from the museum. And fossils, I'm studying fossils, I love those. And here is a page of collage. Now, this is actually paper collage on fabric background and it was put on with PVA glue and then 
the whole thing was covered in PVA glue and I liked this it was basically for the flowers and how you can use the flowers on many crafts not just textile art but pottery stained glass we have glassware here that's ob obviously hand painted as that is not too sure about that that looks as if it's from a Tiffany pendant of some sort um, dressmaking uh, now these, this one you've seen before in part one so it's machine sewn onto the page all the way around the edge and I found this I've had this for a while and I've just popped that there and these are just flowers pinwheels sequins herringbone and running stitch just to, that was basically maybe less than 15 minutes in the field I just happened to have as always a bunch of um, bits and pieces in a plastic bag and I thought I know I'm going to sit and do that luckily I did have a needle as well I have been out and forgotten the needle but never mind that means that I have to be imaginative and use something else beach I did a study, I think I explained with the word sycamore, I did a study on trees and had some letters, uh, some words left over, beach, sycamore and I think there's oak as well, um, I've used in here, obviously had those left over. This is hand knitted and it's string and I just, I think I was babysitting and um, my granddaughter, yes my granddaughter it was because it was the first time she'd seen knitting needles she's just about two, well she's just turned three now and um, I didn't really want to knit in front of her because she's very lively so I did get them out and I showed her and oh she was fascinated um, anyway I put them back and when she went to bed I got it out again and I sat and did this it's rib stitch here, rib here, and just garter stitch going up. And it's just a beautiful texture, just from the garden twine string. And I've put that over there. Now these, the inspiration for this was um, leaves. I have leaf shapes around here. And it's done in an assortment of stitches. All the stitches that we normally use I'm going to make that a little bit bigger because that that piece there is actually on a piece of burlap. I dyed this burlap, well I bleached it to get the this colour. It was the same colour as this but couldn't see it because they were both the same colour so I bleached this piece here. Now the good thing is when you're keeping a book like this because I was compiling this uh, for ideas, I, I've i done things that I wouldn't normally do, like I bleached this to match that. And had I not made this page, I wouldn't have sat and frayed this, I wouldn't have knitted this, and I wouldn't have bleached that. So these jour journals, scrapbooks, notebooks are really good for experimenting with your ideas I now know that when I want this color again I know how to bleach it um, and I haven't done that for years so I just thoroughly recommend you keep these books and these are just some sketches um, let me make that small now this page was done as I explained a little while ago I folded over fabric put the glue along there hot glue along there, pushed it in and held it until it set. You can see, I've added to it, I've coloured in some of these with pencil and I just thought that finished that page and then I added that. Now this says flowers along there and each letter has worked differently. Um, so really, it's just about filling spaces with your ideas. I just had an idea to do that one night. Um, I did a whole alphabet, actually. So all I've done for this is to take out the letters that spell flowers. I mounted it on paper, machine sewed around it, 
and then I've sewn it down there. That is actually sewn down. Now this one is um, it's based on artichoke leaves. I had these, the blue bits here, from uh, cutouts, leftovers from the Broad Street in Birmingham project that I did. So I've put those down. This was already here. Artichoke leaves, the shape of artichoke leaves, how they overlap and the pointedness of them here. And I did quite a lot of work from this, um, enlarged it, I used that as my inspiration. And that I just love, that was just a three minute sketch. I put this paper in here because I just like it. I love the colors there. This is an odds and ends page. Once again, it's serviette mounted on paper, uh, sorry, not paper, on fabric under there and I have some cross stitch that's a plique with buttonhole plique with buttonhole paper printing and weaving this is woven with stitchery over it so the weft or the warp is going down that way the stitching is going that way and that was really, really fun it was so much fun to do and that's given me another idea. So these are all ideas that I'm working on. Now I love this. I love ivy. I love ivy for its shapes. The next time you see ivy, just take a second out to look at the shapes. The large shapes against the smaller shapes, as in this postcard. That postcard's really old. Um, in fact, I'll turn that over. This was a project some time ago, um, and it's, at, it's in the videos, and that was Ivy. And the inspiration for that was this, this here. I, was, I passed some Ivy, and I just did that do, 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 quickly, got home and coloured it in. And from that, I went to that. This too um, is ivy, another way of using ivy. That is fine and delicate. And this is chunky. It's all in wool and it's all chain stitch. Um, I just, just did the corners, just embellished that with some metallic paint. But that green is no tea towel. So you do not have to go and buy anything. None of these super duper mass produced things that you pay a fortune for. You've got it all at home. Ah, now I'm sure you're going to recognise this, the Gorgon's Head from Bath. Um, this was from, I've got my notes here. Known as the Gorgon's Head, this fierce image of a water god once looked on all who entered the precinct of the temple of Sulis Minerva from the postcard, the Roman Baths at Bath and we use this in a really nice project and I, these were actually um, traced and chopped up and coloured in for that project and um, I think I will be returning to that it's just a little watercolour that's all they are you could do that with wax crayon this page isn't finished I need to put some more work there that I have and it's all about shape, almost silhouettes, black and white shape. These are just favourite paintings, pa paintings I like here with flowers. That's done on the fabric page. I just, that's a doodle that I did on the fabric page, as is that. I did that <laughs> with some crayons on the fabric page. And this little piece here I thought fitted in well with the flower theme. So these are PVA's in place at the back and then they've got the PVA right the way over the fabric page and this has been that has been put in place with double sided sellotape of the thick one so let me make that a bit smaller and here we have the piece that I did in part one so that is a nice page on its own I'm not putting anything else on there this you've seen as well and once again I have turned that into a little bit of a scrap book oak 
that's a string design that's a flower head in string and that's a British Rail ticket that wasn't stamped so the lady in the office did that for me she had a lot of them on the side when I was buying a ticket and she said she gives them to the children from the local school as they walk past and she said would I like one and I said oh yes please and she gave me that one <laughs> I wonder what she'd think if I told her I, I'll put it on my YouTube channel now this one was an idea for a journal that I was doing for a course a gratitude journal and it's layers of lace cut away now we we did do on the journal on our channel a couple of weeks ago um, lay, uh, net cut away and this is similar with felt in the background and uh, feather stitch all the way around and just gratitude journal there a few French uh, sorry a few crosses there and a little detail there of buttons that's on the serviette page which I stuck I glued a little bit of um, a page of the flower flowers there from an old book because I thought the yellow of these flowers highlighted the yellow in there in the sewing oh now you've seen these these here so you saw these in part one so that's that's a page on its own and so is this although with this one I did put some patchwork on that I quite like those pages I think those are lovely that one I don't like um, I didn't do any more to it in fact I don't think it's finished I need to do something else here um, makes me a little bit uneasy that one so um, I'm not too keen on that this is the Moore Street station notes from Birmingham and I did a piece on Moore Street and you can see here you can see the numbers of the placement positions here and this is the other side to that so turn over and you get the other side there oh and that's beautiful uh, picture that I just love and I've actually corrupted it I've put the larger I've stuck these on so I've corrupted that now what have we got here oh yes this one you saw this page being made on part one so that is staying just as it is I might hang some things from here later Uh, collage here with a little bag there that is a little bag there it's just another idea some of them may look unfinished like this one and it's because they are unfinished because this is just as I keep saying an ideas book these need filling more ivy you see i just love i have a love affair with ivy um that's just a very quick it was a very quick sketch for placement natural placement and i got home and just very quickly did a little bit of watercolor on there beautiful postcard here oh no that's a page out from a book and that's another type of ivy, a geranium ivy. And from that, there, I did this. Now I'm not sure if you've seen this before. Let's take my marker away there. That, this is all um, herringbone, running stitch, cow chin, and some chain stitch at the bottom. And the, the um, alphabet I was telling you about earlier on there's some more letters there but I didn't finish them like I did the ones that said flowers and then that page and that is the last and that is the back page with oh look at the flowers coming out there in the ivy um, so that is the last page the finger knitting you could do that with your finger like a hook 
or it's just chain with a crochet hook few beads apply to background same here and at some point I'm going to use those and I know exactly how I'm going to use this um, so I need to make notes of that as well and that's on um, a paper background when I say it's a paper background it's paper and chopped up string on here that I made some time ago so that is the end I still have some of these to pop in and they will, these will probably go that's beach I still need to put some of these in but I thought I won't do it today because oh actually I could just stick them here nice piece of weaving there and we use this as well in a project um, so these need to go in but I'm not going to do them now I think um, I've taken up enough of your time but this is how to make your own washi tape now I have some here where should I put I tell you what I just pop it up here because it's about that length maybe that's right now this is from this is all cross stitch I'm going to make that bigger now this could be any fabric that you choose it just so happens that I took this from one of my old embroideries that I did years and years ago and I cut it off and it's just the alphabet now it's got double sided sticky tape on the back and you just pull it off like that so this side is now sticky and it is very sticky and you pop that down where you want it and that is your fabric washi tape made and I'm going to do the same with these as well just pop those down I've got alphabet, another alphabet there that I will stick down and um, actually that page might benefit from cheering up a bit hmm yeah I might spend some time just thinking about placing these so all I will do is take off the sticky bit from the back like so and just put it down okay I hope it's inspired you to do your own your own sketchbook uh, journal scrapbook ideas book uh, because you never know when you get brain fog you want to do something and um, you think I don't know what to do it's always handy to sit and think I know what I'll do okay so I'll see you all soon speak to you on Facebook and um, be pleased to get your feedback on this because um, I'm not sure if you if you really wanted to see I mean I've got others of these as well <laughs> so don't be too positive because you might end up seeing those but I just thought well face-to-face -face students love to handle these they love to flick through take time out from what they're doing and just flick through and it does inspire them actually it inspires them to come in the following week with a started one their own or they find something in here that they think oh is it okay if I use that well yeah it is okay but anyway I'm going to let you go now and um, take care everybody hope you liked it, I really do hope you like it and I'll speak to you soon, bye now